Welcome to New On Campus, and today I'm very glad to welcome um, Majid Gorbiani. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. We have a lot of things to talk about, and um, maybe you could give us like a quick self-introduction of how you've your, your background and how you came to join SIBS. I uh, worked for the uh, Remy University of China uh, Business School uh, Department of Management uh, for about 11 years probably or maybe 12 years I don't remember exactly but um, then uh, I was always interested in joining SIBS because of uh, the things that I thought I could contribute or I can get from SIBS um, or be uh, empowered to do uh, at mm. SIBS so when uh, I was approached and uh, asked whether I would like to join I was like very happy and of course uh, here I am how long have you been in China? The initial uh, arrival time for me was 1988. Wow. Um, August 1998. Um, at that time, my brother was uh, studying at Peking University's uh, medical university, medical mm. school. And uh, I came here, uh, or Beijing rather, and I didn't stay at that time. I came right. traveling. So I stayed for 45 days, almost 46 days or something like that. And then by, by the time I came to stay here, it was 1990. And then mm -hmm. since then I studied and I guess some people might call it Zhongguo Tong after that. If you want me to say it in Chinese, it's just like, 我, 我以前的很多, 我的老同学, 很多人会说我的中文其实已经退步了, so you think your Chinese has uh, levels gone down? Uh, definitely, definitely. When did you start studying? Did you identify learning Chinese as something you wanted to do at an early point? When did you make the decision to, uh, to learn language? So when I left back then, partially because of family uh, reasons and partially because of my own interests, I wanted to come back to China yeah. um, to basically explore a bit more and at that time, uh, you couldn't easily get a tourist visa. Mm -hmm. uh, usually tourist visa was, depending on which country you're from, 15 days or whatever, a few weeks or something. And of course, I wanted to stay a little bit longer time. So the best approach for me would have been to study the language. And I was very interested to learn the language. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, during that time, also explore what's China or uh, what China is. Of course, one thing led to another. I stayed here, studied the language, learned the language. I said, hey, I learned the language. Why should I leave now? Maybe right. I should get my undergrad <laughs> here too. Then I went and got my undergrad. I said, like, well, I got a degree here. Maybe I, instead of leaving, I should get a bit of job experience here too. And then just one thing led to another, and here we are. I can relate to that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Majid, I didn't ask you where you're from, actually. I was born in Iran, born and raised in Iran, yep. um, and then uh, China and Canada. So I am actually Canadian, Canadian Iranian. So your first language would be Farsi? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a little bit tricky and a lot of people ask me that question. And what is the definition of first language? Because mm. if you ask me like which language I speak better, I actually don't speak Farsi that well. Right. Uh, I mean, because I, I'm sure if I went back to Iran after a few months, I might be okay. Be okay, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I, I, I cannot really hold a proper conversation yeah. uh, with anyone in purely Farsi. Uh, you want to be referring to first language as the first language that you learn, mm -hmm. uh, but to me, oftentimes, first language is the fa language that you choose to speak all the time, or you're mm -hmm. more comfortable you speaking. Default. Um, and mm -hmm. English is definitely by far is the most comfortable language for me. Mm -hmm. uh, second is Chinese and third is actually Farsi well, for me. That's pretty interesting to, that you've kind of changed the order of these languages over the course of your career. Yes. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. You came to China in 1988 and you left and you said you came back a couple of years later, is that right? Yes. Have you been here since then? No, altogether in China, I've spent about 23 years out of these 30 some years, uh, 35 years, I guess. After my undergrad, I worked for the United Nations for a few years, mm -hmm. and then uh, I went to Canada, migrated, immigrated to Canada, um, got married, um, then got my PhD, was looking for a job and was exploring different locations. 
and my wife was very, very interested to come to China. So I applied to Renmin University and a few other universities, and Renmin University was the one who accepted. You, you were a lecturer at that time, at Renmin yes. Dao. Yeah. You're like, what did you? What was your your field of study? Uh, my field of study was uh, international business, but I was more interested in uh, both entrepreneur entrepreneurship and uh, business uh, corporate social responsibility, mostly environmental responsibility. And how much of what you've done, both now and in the past few years, how much of, is there a balance between carrying out research or are you focused more on teaching or other projects? Um, I love research um, a lot. Uh, that yeah. was always the attraction of getting a PhD for me. Yeah. Um, and um, I enjoy teaching. Uh, it was something that came to me later. Right. Uh, believe it or not, I was a very kind of like uh, shy person to speak publicly. <laughs> uh, so it was uh, shy extrovert. Uh, maybe have, yes. Have you heard of this so, concept? Say, yeah, exactly. I'm shy kind of extrovert. Yeah. yeah. So so in small group, uh, I could be actually dominating the conversation. Right. You know, making sure everybody is having fun and all what. But you know, if I'm in the big groups, um, I kind of like go to a corner, stand, right. try to be unseen. Right. And uh, so so that's why when I first started teaching, um, it was very nerve wracking for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to whether whoever the, 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 the audience was, doesn't matter, you know, if they were kids or the teenagers or younger yeah. people, young adults or whoever they were. And it just like gradually um, started getting energized. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, to see people are interested to learn um, always yeah. energizes me, you, you know, even if there are a few people in the entire class mm -hmm. who actually are interested to hear what I say. I, how does overall so far, how does Sibs compare in, to, to a Chinese educational institution? Does it feel significantly different or? Yeah, it's just like my impression is uh, that it's a little bit different. Um, how different it is, I don't know. Like for example, I've taught one class, which was MBA class, mm -hmm. MBA course. Uh, so it was all in English and that class more or less was or is uh, similar to what I did at uh, Remy University. Yeah. But going back to, for example, the assistant type, uh, you know, over there in, uh, at Remy University, I never got any help from anyone. Right. Whereas here, uh, there was always, even though I was new and I didn't get a TA, but still, there was somebody there always helping me. Students right. were really, really helpful with many other things. Um, in terms of research, obviously, I've been told a lot of things are much more uh, streamlined and simpler to do mm -hmm. here, uh, which is very good. Um, I am much happier in that sense and much more comfortable actually mm -hmm. uh, to do things because it seems like more um, logical, basically the way the processes work. So what are your plans in terms of what you're going to be doing? It seems you mentioned a moment ago you're teaching MBAs. Are there other classes you're going to be teaching? Uh, is there any specific responsibilities or um, goals or aims you have? I would like to get uh, more involved in executive teaching. Uh, yeah. So whether it's executive education or executive MBA. And uh, I think because of my language and uh, experience, I would be required to teach in uh, the Chinese programs. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's exciting, it's uh, kind of like uh, nerve wracking. But at the same time, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, do, do you have experience with teaching actually in Chinese language? Uh, not as much as I would like to, because right. uh, one of the main reasons I was hired by Renmin University was because they needed somebody to teach in English. I mean, I taught a few courses, a few classes, yep. uh, but I was not required to. It was more kind of like me pushing it to kind of like go there and do it to just hmm. you know gain experience. Um, so I'm looking forward to do that here. Um, the other thing here is that um, I am going to be running the eLab um, or and then uh, a series of programs uh, attached to eLab and entrepreneurship. Um, so I'm still developing some ideas about how to manage cool. that and how to develop that. It's really early days for you. But uh, obviously with you being in China for a long time, I mean Shanghai not being new to you, how much experience have you had of Shanghai as a city in the past? 
I have very limited experience in Shanghai. You uh, spent most of your time based in, in Beijing then? I was right? in Beijing almost. I was based most in the Beijing time. the entire time, mm -hmm. but I traveled extensively. When I actually came to explore Shanghai was in 1990s. Wow. And Shanghai was a very, very different place back then. And you know, like Imagine. all those, um, I did not, I, I think I came to Pudong once. Uh, they showed me this new area of the city, you know, it was such a long way to come to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we always hung out in the Pusi and the other sides of, you know, uh, the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. um, and I have not had the time to explore that area again, yeah. but uh, what I do remember or what I checked so far, um, I cannot recognize a lot of things that I used to know about Shanghai. I haven't spent a lot of time in Beijing as a foreigner, was there any particular parts of Beijing which you liked? Uh, born in Iran, uh, we were always proud of, you know, a kind of like uh, old history, a few right. thousand years of Persian Empire and that, that, that. History. Um, and we have a few, you know, uh, cultural relics and buildings to stuff to, to go look at and, uh, and enjoy. But of course, I came to Beijing, Xi'an, you know, and many other cities. And what I saw was just like these few thousands of history just being within the city and people mm -hmm. living around them. And of course, we see that in Europe, in many European countries too. But, you know, in China, it's a few thousand years and it's just right here and it was very easily accessible. People walk around them. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you go to restaurants, you can sit in a restaurant, a very average restaurant, and you see you have a view of the, for example, Forbidden City. Mm -hmm. So those things were things that I really, really loved about Beijing. Um, the old um, or something with Chinese characteristics, yep. very, very stereotypical um, and classic Chinese characteristics. So and I have not experienced that in Shanghai yet. Right, because that was my next question was going to be with that background you had, experience of living in a particular kind of Chinese city. Obviously, Shanghai is very different. Was that something you considered before you moved here? Uh, it was, if you had asked me like uh, five years ago whether I wanted to move to Shanghai or not, uh, one of my major concerns was always that Shanghai is not necessarily in China. Right. Or yeah. it doesn't feel like you are in China. Yeah. You know, you could be closing your eyes, landing in downtown Vancouver, uh, you open your eyes and you have the same scenery. But, but in many uh, areas of Beijing, apart from the, you know, with the business district, CBD, um, if you go around, you see all sorts of, you know, Chinese stuff and all sorts of like parks yeah. and different monuments that basically remind you of China. Now you've made that leap to kind of base yourself in Shanghai, how does that feel? I'm still hoping that I'm not going to miss it too much. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's only a flight away. Yeah, it's only yeah. a couple hours away, you know, by flight. And I think, as a professor for SIBS uh, at SIBS, you would be flying to Beijing quite often and mm -hmm. different cities to teach as well. When you're not teaching, when you're not on campus, do you have any hobbies or interests? Do you like to spend? How would you like to spend your time? I'm the kind of person who enjoys food tremendously. Well, you came I, to the right country. I, I live <laughs> live for good food. Um, and drinks. On my spare time, I go, I enjoy hiking, going for lo very, very long walks, uh, particularly in very, very local neighborhoods um, or very just places where nobody else, nobody, no textbook or next, no travel guide basically tells you to go. Mm -hmm. uh, just get lost in the city and just pick a restaurant and just find, you know, what kind of food I can get and just find Ur that. Urban the, hikes. Yeah. So yeah. so those are those are my hobbies, basically. And Shanghai's got a lot of potential for those. Have you ever had a mentor or have you ever mentored someone? And how was, what was that like? I don't want to be a stereotypical to say like my dad, my uncle have been, you know, always a big influence on me. There's Not reason. necessarily the best ones, you know, in the sense that <laughs> um, particularly my dad, he always said, um, and that's something that I actually learned and I tell my son as well. I mean, he was telling me this is, these are his words. When you see something that you don't like in me, try to not do it. That's, that's a really clever way to say it, actually. Yeah, yeah. instead yeah. of yelling at me, I mean, his meaning was instead of yelling at me or disagreeing with me or trying mm -hmm. to you know, correct me, just try to not do it yourself. So, so that was one of the things that... I've I never heard that before. That's really good, actually. 
Uh, that's also one of the things that makes me always feel like I can do better. Mm. I can improve my life because if I see something that I don't like, I don't enjoy, uh, that means it's actually something I can fix. Yeah. Is there anything about living in China which is lessons you've learned from your time here which you think you may not have learned had you not spent so much time here? Uh, yes, plenty of times. <clears throat> so exactly as I was saying, like I learned from my father to fix everything. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when I first came to China, I tried to fix everybody else. You know, <laughs> trying to see whether I can fix the entire Chinese culture <laughs> to suit me. Uh, and of course, that's not possible. And I've met a lot of non-Chinese uh, foreigners basically living here who try to do the same thing. Um, but that also brings me to the next second lesson that was pick your fights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what you're good at, what you can do, and try to do those and try to see where you can do, make that, that kind of difference. So obviously I cannot change the entire uh, kind of like culture, rules, regulations or anything. And that's exactly what I also teach in my class. Like yesterday we were talking about this, that you cannot change the institutions. You cannot change the government easily. Mm -hmm. And you have to change things that you can, you have power to change. And that's mm -hmm. you yourself and you know mm -hmm. things around yourself. That's also something that I learned to not be too direct all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, try to uh, learn to praise other people, whether you like them or not, whether you like what they do or not, and try to fix anything that you can in other ways. I'm really conscious that as a very conscientious faculty member that your time is very valuable, so we don't want to keep you here forever. <laughs> as much you. as I really enjoy conversation. As we said, you're new, but um, do you have anything you'd like to say to the SIEMS community? Do you have any, any message? Or... Well, I just would like to say that I'm very happy to be here um, and I'm looking forward to um, meeting all uh, my colleagues um, from all areas, uh, whether administration, different programs or different faculty members uh, to work with them. Um, hopefully, uh, if we had the same similar conversation next year around the same time or two years from down the road, um, I would be telling you that I'm as happy as the first day I arrived. Thank you. Kimi, okay, thank you very much for your thank time. You. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you.